Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show where my studio is going through a makeover. So it looks a little bland back there today, but it's going to look terrific in about a week, week and a half. I won't be having as many um, live streams uh, over the Christmas holiday, so they'll be kind of sporadic, so bear with me. And I thought we'd go over the 2022 projections this today, uh, and they're not mine, so I'm going to share what other people are saying. We have 6,891 homes on the market this morning, and you can see our chart here looks eerily like 2020. So here comes the Christmas dip over here from last year, and here we are, slightly lower on both accounts, although last year listings just fell off the earth down below 2,000 for the seven-day moving average. That's probably going to happen again, and uh, it's, it's just the holidays, nothing major to report there, although we are starting to look just like 2022. Here's our uh, weekly average from the Cromford report, and we finally hit that that brown line, uh, but we've got a long way to go just to get up for 2019. And let's see, 2017 and 18, I'll layer those two in there for us as well. And it didn't do it. There we go, I'll go 2018. So come on, come on, there we are, way up here at 16,907, and we're at 6,400. So therein lies the problem. So now when we look at forecasting 2022, um, there's a lot of different resources that are out there. Some were way off in forecasting 2021 and some were right on the money. And uh, we're going to take a look and see what they're all saying. And there's I've got the links below so you can go in and read the articles. But we start right off now with Realtor.com. And here they are. Housing forecast 2022. They missed it last year. They missed it greatly, except... They said that interest rates would be 3.4%. That's the only thing where they got close. And they're saying it's going to be a world whirlwind year. Okay. Um, so they're saying existing medium home sale prices will be up 2.9% and existing home sales up 66 But our existing home for sale inventory won't even be up 1%, up 0.3%. That's... Uh, that's not a good sign that prices are going to, you know, level out uh, anytime soon. If inventory stays that low, I don't know. I They're going to have a hard time convincing me that 2.9 is going to be the lid on appreciation. Mortgage rates average 3.3 through the year and 3.6 by the end of the year. Um, they're going to be, the Fed's going to be letting us know this Wednesday how much their uh, tapering is going to be. So we're going to watch that very, very closely. And the home ownership rate is 65.8 versus 65.5. So um, we'll see. Like I say, they, they missed it greatly last year. We'll see what they have to say. Speaking of missing it greatly, I think CoreLogic was probably the poster child for, for, for calling the market wrong. Um, here was 2021, and they said that we were going to be up year over year 2.5%, and we came up 18. That's a bit of a miss. Uh, I know the Cromford report was was hitting them pretty hard on how bad they were missing. And they, uh, so what are they saying this year? Well, they're saying that, uh, let's see, we're going to have home price changes. Those are the top 10 states, markets to watch, uh, top markets at the risk of home price decline is in Massachusetts, Springfield, Modesto, Merced. And they are saying, I found it here just a moment, but I think they're calling us up about uh, 5%. Let's see here. Um, they're saying, oh, home price is expected to decline by 1.2% by October 2022. Right there. So they are not as, uh, they're just as pessimistic as they were last year. So they're saying we're going to go down. And that's going to be one we're going to have to watch closely. Uh, that's core logic. And here's core logic again. Uh, put it in a chart form 2021, 15%. And here they're saying 6% in 2023, 4%. So they're kind of all over the map, aren't they? Now, the big one. Um, and I say big one just because they've, they've been in the news a lot. But uh, when Zillow pulled out of the market for buying homes, remember what everybody was saying? Zillow sees data that we don't see. They must see that things are getting really bad. So they're getting out before the crash, okay? So Zillow has decided that things are looking so bad that they've got to pull out. And here's what they're saying. So the housing market may not reach the incredible heights of 2021, but we expect it will be anything but slow next year. It says the strong seller's market to persist. 
the Sun Belt to maintain its top spot in the most demand regions. They're saying that 2022 will fall just short of record breaking. They're forecasting 11% home value growth in 2022. Now, like I said the other day, let that sink in. For people that were saying that Zillow were seeing numbers that looked really bleak, so they decided they're going to get out, and then they come around and go, well, we're going to be up 11%. So why weren't they making money? Because they were paying too much for the homes. Too many people started saying yes and accepting their offers, and the volume was too high. They couldn't handle it. They couldn't find people to fix them. I even saw a video yesterday that was saying that Zillow got out because of pricing volatility, that the market was too hard to predict. No, that's not what they said. They got out because of the volatility of the mechanics of trying to flip a home. They couldn't get anybody to paint it. They couldn't find the paint. They couldn't get anybody to fix it up so that they could flip it. They had too many homes on the market uh, that they had purchased, and they logistically just couldn't do it. They didn't anticipate having those kind of problems. So they didn't get out because there was going to be a crash. I really want to emphasize that. And in fact, I usually don't make a lot of comments on other people's channels on YouTube, but I did on that one. I said, uh, however. <laughs> now, this guy, Robert Schiller, um, he's one that you should pay attention to. He's an uh, economist. <coughs> he's a professor of finance at Yale. And I watched him very closely in 2005 and 2006. He was really letting people know that there was a definite supply side issue in 2006. And he was laying it out very clearly saying, look, there, there aren't that many people moving here versus the number of homes we're building. This looks like it's going to get bad. And he was really bashing the, mark, the mortgage market saying, these loans are terrible. This is going to come out to bite us. And he, I remember him saying, I predict a 43% decline in house prices. And it happened. And so he, he's, however, He's also right there, you know, now he's not independent. He's, he's, uh, he works with the core logic people, the ones I just showed you that were way off. So I think you have to read two things. You have to look at core logic, and then you have to go back and kind of read some of the things that uh, Schiller is saying on his own. So he's saying it's interesting that this happened during the pandemic, that we were up 19.7% in the past year. Now he said it's plausible that the boom will diminish but housing prices have risen relative to construction prices, so demand for existing homes will likely to go down. If that doesn't bring prices down, supply will increase and decrease prices. That's what we've been shouting from the rooftops here. We need supply to go up in order for prices to go down. The outlook for home prices is not as positive as many think, Schiller says. That's interesting. Rarely. Indeed, he describes the economy as markets as extremely unusual. High prices on all three major asset classes, stocks, bonds, real estates, rarely all three tied uh, this high together. He said and added that it's valid to point to monetary policy as the cause. And he said, it's like the 1920s, and this is the second roaring 20s. And uh, He's talking about stocks and real estate. So, you know, things are raging. Prices are going up. He has not yet put out a crash call, but it's a possibility. His expected return for stocks is positive and higher than the Treasury bond yield, but he did not say over what time frame that applied. So he's going on saying, look, I'm not going to say there's a crash, uh, but I do think there's some problems out there um, in central bank policy and monetary policy. But like I've said, I think the debt bomb fuse has been lit, but I don't know how long the fuse is. So we could have acceleration in real estate uh, you know, for the next two years quite easily. Um, so it's going to be, uh, those are the ones I think to watch. Uh, I've put the link in below so you can take a look at that. But there's some other news out here in Phoenix that the $750 million redevelopment of Metro Center in Phoenix is planning to start next year. So if you go up I-17 by Cactus, you're going north and you look to your left, you're just going to see a lot of dirt and destruction. Looks like it's been bombed. That was the mall. That was one of the first malls on the West Coast, and it turned into a dinosaur. And here's what they're planning on doing. They said this Florida-based company uh, announced Thursday they're under contract to buy the property and plan to work with Heinz on a $750 million redevelopment of the massive mall at Metro Parkway. And what they're saying, and this looks like it's going to be pretty cool. Here's an artist rendering. So they're going to have 2,600 multifamily units. That's a lot. And 100,000 square feet of essential service retail. Plans for boutiques, retail stores, 
restaurants, bars in town. Did I say boutiques? It's boutiques, isn't it? Bars, restaurants, a town center park, and other commercial entertainment venues. So instead of just a big enclosed mall, they're going to have a nice park there, and they're going to have retail, they're going to have shops, and they're going to have multifamily living. So that's nice to see that blight clear up. There's some other malls around here where that's going on as well. The one, uh, the Paradise Valley Mall on Cactus, um, that one has, is getting scraped. And they're going to put in something that looks like Kierland for those that live here, know what Kierland is like. And then out in the East Valley on the 60, there's a mall that's dying. It's called the Superstition Mall. It's in pretty bad shape. A lot of anchors have died. Even the one in Chandler, Chandler Fashion Center, um, Nordstrom's is closed, Sears closed. Uh, you walk around there, and it's it's just a ghost town. So I mean, a lot of people walking around there over the holidays, but nowhere near what it was like when it was thriving. So those, it looks to me like they're finding better use for all these huge pieces of property. So these malls uh, are eventually all going to get scraped, and they're just going to come in with a different format. So I'm glad to see that. I've been wondering for a long time what you're going to do with these malls. So that's a good sign that we're getting some redevelopment. So stick with me. Don't forget to hit that like button before you leave. YouTube likes it, and I absolutely love it. Have a great beginning to the week, and go out and finish your Christmas shopping. I am way behind.